Hello everyone, it's GigaBeef here and today I'll be showing you why I think that the Val is pointless when compared to the VSS, as well as why modding either weapon is basically a waste of time. At first glance, you'd think that the Val must be better than the VSS. It is generally more expensive, being 150k from Prapor 4, but usually about 130k on the flea, versus the VSS, which has two expensive ish barters at 135 and 160k, but is normally between 70,000 rubles and 120 for a full durability one on the flea market. The Val has greater modding potential too, and the stock isn't made of literal wood, so surely it's superior. As a baseline starting point, let's have a look at the unmodded performance. Here we have both a VSS and a VAL, both of them have an SVD low mount and an EOTech hollow. Other than that, they're basically just the stock gun. If we fire the VSS first and then the VAL afterwards, we can see the innate parameters of these two weapons. The VAL has slightly lower vertical, but it's only by a little, and it has more horizontal. This is hard to control for, so the VSS is the winner in this particular test right from the outset. Swapping both the VSS and the VAL over to the minimum recoil variant makes them both 34 in the in-game stats, which is quite interesting, and the VSS is easy to get there. All you need to do is get the VSS VAL TOS SP29M mount, and onto that stick a foregrip of your choice. In this case, because we're looking at minimum recoil, we'll look at the RK2. Other than that, you don't need to do anything. For the VAL, it's very slightly more complicated, but because this is a gunsmith thing, most people know how to do this, and what you do is you grab the AS VAL Rotor 43 pistol grip and buffer tube, and you stick that on. Usually you don't buy it from the fleet, you trade it for a pack of milk with Mechanic 2. And then onto this, we can put the PRS Gen 3, which is the most recoil reducing stock. Now, the reason why this gets to 34 as well is because the AS VAL actually has a higher recoil number at base than the VSS does. Firing both of these, we can see that the resulting pattern looks very similar between the VSS and the VAL itself, but if we actually watch what happens when the gun fires, you can see that the lack of horizontal recoil on the VSS makes for a much more stable firing pattern while it's actually going off, which is quite interesting. In the full recoil configuration mode, I would also argue that the VSS is the winner here too. Now let's just swap back to the VSS itself for a second. The difference between having the RK1 canted variant versus the standard one without any foregrip at all is actually only 3 recoil because of the low base recoil of the VSS. This takes you from 38 to 35. Lots of people use a foregrip of various types because, well, less recoil is just better, surely, but practically when we test this, I mean, it's impossible for me to see the difference between the two. The VAL is much the same, and this time, if we use the SE5 and the PRS Gen 3, it hardly makes any difference versus the base weapon. Again, because the low base recoil on the weapon itself, the mods with low recoil percentage reduction like foregrips actually make very little difference. For the VAL, it's more surprising because the recoil is actually even wider than on the VSS. The difference is between 40 recoil at base versus 35 for the meta recoil variant, and the spray patterns favour the meta one very slightly, but it's so close that it could just be within the randomness of the pattern itself. So all in all for recoil, it seems like the VSS wins out, and it's barely worth putting on any attachments at all because it makes practically no difference to how the weapon performs. What about ergonomics? So let's look at the base VSS to start with. This one has 47 ergonomics when you combine it with the 30 round magazine, and when you ADS on this, it takes 9 frames from the stamina bar moving until the dot comes on screen for the EOTech hollow. This is usually how I measure the ergonomics impact on ADS speed because it's very difficult to measure specifically when the crosshair is completely settled in the centre of the screen because the motion gets so small. It's much easier to look at the movement bar when it jumps from full to half which indicates that you're into ADS and then when the actual main point crosshair of whatever scope it is that you're using, in this case the EOTech, comes visible outside of the frame of the optic. So anyway, the base VSS takes 9 frames to get into the ADS that we're measuring here, and then when we swap this over to the RK1 canted with a knurl charging handle, that takes us from 47 ergonomics up to 51. In this case, this takes us down from 9 frames to 8, which is really not that much, but you know, it's better than nothing. Amping up the ergonomics even further, we then use the SI Cobra, which is the highest ergonomic foregrip that we can get access to on the VSS, and that takes us to 58 ergonomics and 7 frames. Likewise on the VAL. The VAL starts with an ergonomics in the same configuration as base at 48 ergo, and this takes between 9 and 8 frames. It was actually slightly different for some of the different tests that I did. I then moved to the SE5 on this one, plus the Gen 3 stock, and this was 8 or 7 frames at 53 ergonomics. From here, you can push the ergonomics quite high on the VAL up to 63, because that's the SE5 foregrip, plus I added the GLR16 stock, which is one that you just never see ever being used, because people almost always use the MOE plus the butt pad. But in this particular case, we've decided that the recoil mods don't make any difference at all, so I focused exclusively on ergonomics, and we've gone for the one that gives us the most. 
Moving that up to 63 ergo means that the Val now ADS is in seven frames instead. So that's the same as the VSS when it had 58 ergo. So overall, yeah, I mean, it's pretty clear to me that I think the VSS is the winner. Tighter horizontal spread with almost identical vertical will always be easier to control, as we should generally choose reduced horizontal recall over reduced vertical recall because of the consistent nature of vertical recall that we can plan, predict and pull down for versus the randomness of horizontal, which we can't. In my opinion, based on the facts, the best way to run the VSS is just to use the VFG vertical foregrip because it's extremely cheap, the vertical recoil component doesn't make any difference and it's nearly as good as an SE5 without any of the price. One element of the VSS that is very important is the ammunition. There are five ammos available, SP5, SPP, SP6, PAB9 and BP, but the access for these is much harder than it might look at first glance. SP5 is straightforward being on Prapor 2 and SPP is on Prapor level 3 and both of these are relatively decent actually for what they do, SPP in particular dealing with class 4 readily and having 68 damage which is pretty good but obviously it'll start to struggle a little bit with class 5. To really turn this into an endgame shredder you kind of want to have SP6 but the problem with this is that it requires Prapor level 4 and test drive part 1. Test drive part 1 itself is not necessarily an issue but it comes as a quest after Grenadier which is one that people tend to struggle with getting done. I know that this time around I haven't really been prioritising grenade kills and even though I do take them into lots of raids and throw them, they're more of an area of denial tool than getting direct kills themselves using the actual grenade and so I don't have it completed unless I go and force it with impact at some point, which I haven't done yet. So before you could do this you can't buy SP6 and then incidentally you also can't buy BP because that's also locked behind the same quest test drive as well. So what about PAB9, which looks to sit in the middle of SP6 and BP and is pretty decent and only requires the workbench level 3. Well the issue with this is that you need SP6 to craft it in the first place, so unless you can find some SP6 in the world and then go and use that to craft PAB9, you're also kind of out of luck. One thing that is very important to understand about the VSS is the heat on the ammos. Once you get up to SP6 at least, you're looking at plus 61% heat, which doesn't necessarily mean anything in a vacuum, but when you're firing it in full auto out of a 30 round mag, you do start to see the effects. The VSS being integrally suppressed, it heats up extremely quickly and you get quite a lot of jams definitely on mag 2 if you're fighting a lot of players in close combat and you're having to fire a lot of bullets. The AB9 is slightly better for this, but you really just have to watch out when you're using it that you don't mag dump too much because otherwise you might end up making the gun explode and then you'll have an unfortunate death in the middle of a firefight. If you can manage that though, any of SP6, PAB9 or BP will all basically shred most stuff in the game. SP6 is pretty much like BP out of 7.62 weapons and so, as you can imagine, that makes it extremely powerful. So finally, I'm going to show you a couple of little clips. The last one is quite an interesting one because I didn't realise that there was a door behind me on streets because it was in one of the early days of playing, but this was actually a clip that I recorded on my own off stream whilst trying to get some other stuff done, so enjoy.
So a big shout out to all my patrons and as always, have fun in your raids.